Hello, welcome to the world of DNA. I've got a lovely model here of DNA. So in our last video I showed you what a nucleotide appeared like. So a nucleotide, remember, consists of a pentose sugar, a base and a phosphate group. The sugar, because we're looking at uh, DNA, is going to be deoxyribose and the bases, as we can see on the model, come in four colours. So we've got green, yellow, uh, you know, peach and blue representing those four bases. And those four bases are adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine. And you need to know which ones are purines and which ones are pyrimidines. So the ones without a Y in are purines, so that's adenine and guanine. And the ones with a Y in are the pyrimidines, which are thymine and cytosine. So thymine and cytosine only have one nitrogen-based ring in their structure. You don't need to know the molecular structure of these bases. Uh, but you do need to know that the purines have two nitrogen-based rings so that you could recognise them if you saw the structural formula. So, uh, DNA. It's a lovely double helix shape. By double helix, we mean that it has, as you can see, two sugar phosphate backbones. So these are sugars, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, all the way up. There are two strands, so if I unwound it, it would look like a ladder, and that's quite often how you'll see it drawn. So what holds those two strands together are hydrogen bonds between the bases. So the sugar phosphate backbone are on the outside and the bases are all on the inside. Now you can see if you look at the internal bit here that our yellow and greens are always together and our peaches and blues are always together. And these are called our complementary base pairs. So it's not complement, that's sort of, you know, Dr. Saffle, your hair's looking wonderful today. Uh, it's complementary, meaning opposite shapes. So that means that adenine is always attached to thymine. So if adenine is our peach one, opposite it will always be our blue thymine. If cytosine is our yellow one, opposite it, hydrogen bonded to it, will always be our green guanine molecule. And then the sugars and phosphates will condense together to hold those together. So in between the bases, complementary base pairs, they're held by hydrogen bonds. And this is the structure worked out by Watson and Crick. And in part, although if you watch Dr. Watson talking about it, um, he will say he didn't like Chargaff when he met him and he kind of ignored his data. Those base pairings, there was evidence of those earlier. So remember that we're always kind of looking for, hmm, what experimental work is going to back this up? So that's the sort of basic structure of DNA. Complementary bases held together by hydrogen bonds, sugar phosphate backbone. Purines always linked to pyrimidines, so it's always sort of three nitrogen wing rings wide. So it's a nice even spacing between them. Um, Chargaff is the guy that did the work on base pairing, and what he did was he took uh, different sorts of cells. Uh, he seemed to be, to be honest, a little bit obsessed with sperm. That's what he talks about in his video. Um, and what he noticed was that the percentage of the DNA in any particular cell showed an almost equal percentage of adenine to thymine and an almost equal percentage of cytosine to guanine, which is why he called them complementary base pairs. He realised that they were linked up in some way. Now, you may have to, of course, in an exam, calculate a ratio from that. Remember, that's just a division sum. So if you were asked for the uh, ratio of guanine to cytosine, you would divide the number of guanine 
by the number of cytosine and it would be a number to one. The denominator is always the one. So that's all I'm going to say about chargaff. We now need to just talk a bit about anti-parallel nature. So, if we look at our uh, sugar, the phosphate in our nucleotide, yeah, can I get it apart? Okay. Uh, the sugar in our nucleotide is attached to the phosphate at position 5, so on carbon number 5. The next phosphate down is actually attached to carbon number 3. So we've got five, a 5 end and a 3 end. And we call these the 5 prime and 3 prime ends of the molecule. So the strands are anti-parallel, that means that they run in opposite directions. So at one end of the molecule you'll have a 5 prime end here and a 3 prime end here and at the other end you'll have the opposite. So we've got a 5 prime end at one end and a 3 prime and at the other end this one will be 5 prime, this one will be 3 prime. So they're running, if you think 5 prime to 3 prime, they'll be running in opposite directions and we call that anti-parallel. OK, I'm just going to have a quick check now of the list that you've got to check that I've talked about everything that I need to. OK. Yep. Tip top. I think I've covered absolutely everything there. Super duper. It's over. <laughs>